doing there are always several scenarios to consider when modeling basically um, the bulk of existing literature that considers inflow modeling assumes a steady state flow in fact most of the empirical solutions most of the analytical and semi-analytical um, models that have been developed in the oil and gas industry basically concentrates on steady state models or semi-steady state models which basically considers the fact that all fuel flow parameters do not change with time so you're basically just looking at a steady state flow and um, all the parameters within all the flow parameters basically are considered to be to be steady not changing with respect to time but might be changing with respect to positions so um, well why that is also relevant and very important because uh, most importantly um, you want to know you want to know how flow behaving at certain at certain positions maybe close to the perforations how does flow behave how does pressure behave you know within the well bore because you need the 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 you need the maximum pressure in your well in your within your well bore to be able to drive the fluids up to the surface so whatever you're doing you want to make sure that you preserve and conserve pressure within the system because it's, it's necessary for driving fluid up to the surface so whatever you're doing you're trying to make sure that you don't you have minimal pressure losses within the system so uh, while the positional fluid parameter changes are very important it's also important to also note the to capture the time the time based behavior it's time dynamic behavior of fluids also within the system so this study concentrates basically on 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 observing the fluid flow dynamics from as fluid advances from the reservoir into the well bore with respect to time and with respect to positions too um, most importantly fluid flow in the near well bore region is 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 very complicated because flow fluid passes through several several devices that are coupled to the well bore and and coming to understand the fact that there are several several stages through which fluid passes through before it gets to the well bore it's very critical first of all fluid flows from the reservoir itself through the porous media into the perforations and as it advances towards the well bore it passes through the, the cemented region which is mostly considered as, as the region of damaged um, permeability which is most time considered as um, um, damaged zone okay uh, because you have impaired permeability within those regions so you want to know how fluid navigates through those areas how it possibly navigates through um, icds inflow control devices in cases where you have you have you cop you've coupled um you've coupled sand screens and other inflow control devices into the well bore and in cases also where you have um, you have a cased hole how fluid flows from the cased hole through into the tubing you know or through the annulus whichever, whatever the case may be and you also want to know how fluid behaves within the toe or the heel you know within the toe of the reservoir and the heel as it flows from the heel you know to up to the surface you want to know what the, how fluid behaves within those regions and so this 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 altogether aggregates and constitutes some very complex system of flow and you want to know what how the fluid flow behavior within those areas uh, are important to us the relevance of inflow modeling basically is large because it predicts fluid inflow behavior you want to know how your be your pressure behaves as as flow advances from the reservoir into the well but you want to know how your velocity behaves you want to, you want to have reasonable velocity also fluid flow movement within the system but most importantly pressure is the most important thing because you want to conserve pressure reduce um, um, reduce pressure differentials as fluid advances from the reservoir to the well bore itself so you want to with all these parameters with all these parameters you are able to it will aid you in also doing inflow performance analysis you want to know what it was the inflow performance model as you develop your inflow performance model using maybe other um using maybe material balance or maybe using uh, uh prosper but then that's beyond the scope of this study but this the inf the inflow be fluid flow behaviors are important parameters that you use for performing your inflow performance analysis and then you want to also 
know the, what's the optimum production conditions uh, I mean within the system that's obtainable within the system be, be, because you want to know you don't want to produce at a very high production at a very high flow rate um, while undermining um, which if you if you produce at a very too high production rate you, you run the risk of of maybe losing your pressure because you might, you might have to do um, pressure maintenance in the future maybe in the shortest possible time but if you are able to optimize your flow rate you, you might delay the time for which you might need to start doing um, pressure maintenance and then it's critical for determining the appropriate well completion you you want to know you want to know the flow rates you want to know the pressure um, and and if if flow is perfect you know you 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 might you might not want to have run your casing because if you have a consolidated formation you may not need to run your casing because uh, the, the it, and, and in the cases where you don't you don't run casing you have higher flow rates you just may just need to install your inflow control devices your like your sand screens to make sure that you're able to curtail um you're able to control sand flow into the well bore and then most importantly um you want to know how profitable this venture is before you even get into it in the first place so these flow parameters are critical to to determining the profitability of the venture have we mentioned earlier that for this this study we are looking at um, a transient case study we are not we are the time considered for this this simulation is just basically one second at intervals of 0.1 seconds which might be sh which might be short but then considering the size of the reservoir we are working with which is basically a hypothetical model uh, one second is sufficient to define to define the to to better capture flow different differentials within those the necessary within the time given so most uh critically we are looking at a horizontal well we are taking just a control volume that captures the casing the perforations and how flow advances from the reservoir to the perforations into the the well ball. for this case we're not looking at a damage zone because uh, we're not able to capture that the reservoir and well dimensions are given in the two tables reservoir and flow properties that were engaged but then in validating the model we the convergence plot we got for this study is times by minus three which is which is a significantly low error um, for this the simulation but then also went a step further to further validate this model by running first of all a steady state steady state simulation and then a transient state simulation for a steady state simulation we used it to validate the model we used the the given um, Reservoir properties. First of all, we had a, a permeability of 300 millilitres. We had a pressure differential of 1,200 psi. That's the pressure of the reservoir. Um, difference between the yeah, the pressure of the reservoir basically is 1,200 psi. We we also had um, we used water. I mean, the, the fluid considered for this case was water, and the viscosity of water was 0 0.89 centipoids. The length of the well, which is the same, which has to be said, the same length as the reservoir is five feet, um, and the area of the reservoir given by this, this. But then, the porosity that was used is 0.38, as against 0.45 that was used for the main model. But the flow rate obtained using from the model is 2.07 kilograms per second. But then there is that is. Um, flow rate equation that is used to calculate the flow rate for a steady state scenario which is given as equation 4 point given by equation 4.1 and the flow flow rate calculated using this model gave us 2.12 kg per second as compared to 0 2.07 we have a relative error of 0 0.24 which is basically 2.4 percent um, error which is probably small enough so looking at the results we obtained um, it was not really Possible for us to capture the fluid flow behavior, you know, fluid flow pressure rather within the well bore, but we're able to capture the absolute peak fluid pressures within the reservoir, within the, the well bore, as compared against the, the pressure, constant pressure of the reservoir, which was um, 
the constant pressure of the reservoir rather. So looking at looking at the this 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 plot, you find out that we had an initial stage, transient stage between zero seconds to zero point one seconds, within which we had a surge in pressure from nine point six five bar to nine point eight point five bar. And from zero point one second to one second, which is the time span of the simulation, we had a relatively constant pressure. So showing that we had an initial initial um, transient period followed by a steady state period. Um, also looking at the the fluid velocity, peak fluid velocity, basically the maximum velocity that's obtained within the system at a given time over across the the well bore, found out that fluid velocity increased initially. I mean, relatively, there was a constant increase if, because if you put a straight line from the first point to the last point, you find out that you have a relatively straight line across. So it shows that there was an increase in velocity over the time of the simulation. So while, while we had an initial surge in pressure followed by a constant, a constant pressure regime, we rather had a gradually increasing velocity velocity within the system. More so the shear rate induced by the fluid by fluid flow within the system um, shows that we also had an initial transient stage. I mean but this time around we had the, a lot of changes within the system over the time of simulation rate from zero seconds to but around 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 seconds, we had changes within changes, fluid share rate induced changes within the system. And, and before we started experiencing it at a later stage from 0 0.9 seconds to 1 second, we started experiencing a constant share rate induced by the fluid. We're looking at the flow, fluid flow rate. Um, we experienced also just like we had in, in pressure of the system we had an initial spike in fluid flow rate from around seven kilograms per second to uh, more than four, around 15 meters 15 kilograms per second mass flow rate in the system and then for over the remaining time considered for the study we're seeing a relatively constant mass flow rate across the period across the time considered so in in conclusion it's Yes, there is always an initial, initial transient period within which fluid flow, fluid flow parameters changes a lot within the system, and you cannot ignore it. But then it's also truly preceded by followed, followed by a steady state regime. Uh, you, you cannot you cannot avoid or totally ignore the transient stage period, even though it is short, because even within that period, you need to be able to to understand the parameters and the rate at which they change with the initial period before you eventually move into the, the constant pressure or constant um, constant share rate or constant flow rate regime within which you, you, you experience relatively constant flow behaviors. You, you need to you need to better prepare for both for both phases and 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 design your system in such a way that you're able to capture them. So first of all We've seen that share rate changes last longer. I mean, the share rate lasts longer. You have a lot of changes in share rate over the period, and and you need to also take that into consideration when designing your 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 casing and your tubing cases. We you have to use them because those share, those fluid induced share rates um, have adverse effects also on the walls of your of your on the walls of your your well bore. So altogether, CFD is able to run successfully a, a transient um, modeling of inflow and captures inflow behavior across the the near well bore region for for this study, and and we all, we also know that we're also beginning to experience. I mean, literature has already proven that just. In, 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 in the same in, in the same direction as this study shows that there's a possibility there's an increasing 
um, potential for CFD to be used as a modeling tool in the oil and gas industry as against what is seen in using dynamic simulators and semi-analytical uh, um, models that have been developed um, in, in the past. In contrast to, well, why this does not necessarily um, 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 disagree with the results that have been obtained, it just further shows that it's possible to also have a transient uh, model using computational fluid dynamics.